स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया lecture series on bioenergetics of life processes so today is our second lecture so in the first lecture if you recollect we talked briefly about the different sources of energy the sun or the stars like sun for earth of course sun is the nearest uh, star and which is the perennial source of our energy till the sun cools down. Similarly, we talked about chemical sources of energy or chemosynthesis and uh, we briefly outlined the four weeks what we will be dealing and this these are the important point. So, week one we are dealing with uh, bioenergetics and origin of life along with partly along with the thermodynamics and mechanism of energy transduction. So, this is what we will be dealing for next uh, four classes. Then the week two we will talk a little bit in detail about uh, chemosynthesis and photosynthesis and exactly how these things are kind of uh, throwing light to our understanding of uh, the core energy transformation processes which are happening on the floor of earth or underneath the sea bed or the ocean bed which is governing much of our ecosystems at different uh, conditions starting from extreme ecosystems to you know normal ecosystems on the floor of earth. Next, we will go for the electron transport, what we talked about in the photosynthetic electron transport or in other word, the one which is driven by sun. Similarly, that electron transport, how that helps the mitochondria to synthesize molecules like ATP and which will take out to the most fundamental thing which is uh, essentially your ATP synthesis or glucose synth synthesis. So, to start off with today is our second class. So, bioenergetics and the origin of life. This is where we are starting. So, we are into lecture 2 of 20. bioenergetics and origin of life. So, and then next we will be following the thermodynamics in that line. Thermodynamics and uh, that will be followed by it is a fourth point we will be dealing with mechanism of energy transduction, yes. Mechanism of energy transduction, okay. So, when you talk about origin of life, so, probably one of the most uh, challenging question for philosophers, for biologists, for natural scientists, for all of us, irrespective of which domain of uh, knowledge we are pursuing, this question has haunted us how we arrived in this form currently and is that the final frontier or are you going to keep on evolving? So, we really do not know the future where we are heading and we do not know the past from where we have come. We know the present, 
and uh, standing at the present, we make some, I would say, within human limits of rationality, some rational guesses. They may be wrong, they may be right. But since we can't travel back in time, and we cannot travel in future as of now, we do not have a time machine. So the, our only machine, what we have, is our brain. And uh, we have this earth as our experimental lab, where we do some experiments which tries to mimic an earth which, as per the guess of the geologist, is some billions of years old. So probably life has evolved, as they say, some four or five billion years ago, some form of. How was the earth at that time? Now think of it. We can't even think properly how was the earth 100 years back. We do not have that many data set. On, based on that, currently I see you know, the ice caps are melting and there are pollution problems, there are this issue, that issue. We sometimes wonder that, uh, well, these are just 100 years. In a span of billions of years, where only truth which has happened is the change. Change is the only thing which remained permanent all throughout these processes. How really we can make some bold remarks which I see all over the media time and again. But well, keep that aside. If we think of an earth, or at, at least we try to think of an earth which is some billions of years old, how was the earth? So when we have to talk about the origin of life, we have to pinpoint some of those critical events, what mankind believes are critical events. Those who have done some degree of research believes that. Possibly these were the events which uh, govern who we are today. So today, if we look at today where we live, so this is our story. We live in an environment, so, so this is time present. So this is the arrow of time moving forward. And this is where we are standing. Okay. At this point, this environment is rich in oxygen. So we live in aerobic world. And uh, <laughs> our major energy source is sun. We have green plants as autotroph, or in other words, they can synthesize their own food using sun, synthesize own food using solar radiation and salt and minerals okay, that they are deriving from the roots. <laughs> then we have next class of species, what we are, the heterotrophs. We consume them and further this cycle goes on as we term famously the food chain. Now the question is, what was it if we pull the time arrow back to say, you know, 4 to 6 billion years ago? How was it? Was it like this? On all likelihood, origin of life was not that beautiful or 
not what you see today. The earth as is being predicted 4 billion years ago, the sun was way more intense radiations on earth. There was no UV protection, there was no UV cover, there was lot of water of course, which is now also it is there and the whole earth mass was filled with different kind of current day what we call most of those hazardous gases like H2S, sulfur dioxide and there are several <laughs> transition metal like you know sulphides. and there was no oxygen. This was probably the earth which was at a very high temperature degree centigrade, very, very high as compared to the current day where we kind of live around you know 37 to 47 degree to you know some places like minus 20 degree. This is the range where we are living minus 20 to minus 40, you know, there are places where at particular time of the year the temperature really falls down and at particular time of the year there are places that temperature shoots up to say 47, 48. But 4 billion years ago the earth was a different ball game altogether and it has traveled like this. Now the question is under those conditions, if these conditions had to be emulated, how possibly life has evolved? Was all these things were there? It possibly does not look like they were there. Why? Because that is where it comes your rational guess, because most of these plant would not be able to survive a certain temperature beyond say you know 50 or 60 degrees, would not be able to survive. Similarly, they would not be able to survive a very low temperature too. So, they survive within an optimal temperature range. So, now the thing is that if the ambience, so either there are two possibilities, the first form of life which evolved could tolerate high temperature, possibilities are there, okay. So, if we put that first forms of life evolved could tolerate very high temperature. Interestingly, if we write this line, that brings us to a very interesting paradigm. That essentially means these were some kind of a hyper thermophiles. something hyper means higher, very high, thermo means temperature. So, something which can tolerate high temperature and having said this, think of it, there are such microbes which are hyper thermophiles and these microbes could be found, it is not that they are extinct, could be found in extreme environment on earth like you know hot spring. geysers or deep inside the earth crust. So, essentially if you see these environment, these are the environment what we are talking about something like this, something like this. In other words, still we have such situation where you have high temperature, you have sulfur rich compounds and that is where life survives. And when I say it that we make rational guesses based on experimentations, based on observations, that is how the origin of life story rolls. We make guesses 
possibly how that may have happened. And that's all based on within the framework of human rationality. So, possibly that's where we lay the foundation stone that these hot springs or geysers are the source where life probably have originated. And as a matter of fact, those of you who do molecular biology must have seen that there are a lot of research goes on these microbes because they can withstand such temperature and for all kind of DNA manipulation, most of the enzymes which functions, so these are those enzymes which functions at those high temperature, those enzymes which are related to you know DNA editing some way or other are extremely, extremely helpful. As a matter of fact, the whole field of molecular biology relies on those kind of exotic organisms, their genome, which helps to synthesize those kind of enzymes, the proteins, which can withstand very high temperature, these kind of harsh conditions, they have mechanisms which they have developed. <laughs> but even before that, if we look at it, so this is where we are talking about where the organisms are formed. Now, in this soup, the first question comes, if we talk about an earth like this, the first, very first question comes is how the first set of molecules have formed. And what were those molecules? Were they two questions which comes, were they inorganic in nature? or they were organic in nature. Because if you look at the earth some billions of years ago, there were hardly any chance that there were organic molecules. Most of them would have been some form of inorganic compounds like you know, most of those were iron, sulfur, manganese, molybdenum, these kind of things and lot of hydrogen sulphide, sulphur dioxide, lot of UV rays, high temperature, these were the conditions. And of course, lot of water likewise and most of those conditions as I mentioned here there were hardly any oxygen. It is believed, I will come to this, it is believed that somewhere out here, the oxygen came into picture. In other words, from the biggest transition which took place was from anaerobic to aerobic landscape. But much earlier than that, if we talk about how the first set of molecules or first set of self-assembly which happen, we have no clue. We just have guess. Because when we write in biology, we talk about when we draw a cell, we draw a cell like this. So this is a mammalian cell, all of you are aware of. These are lipid bilayers and here is a nucleus with a DNA and there is small organelles like mitochondria, empty I am showing by, then you have plant cells where you have chloroplast I am showing by CHL, NUC is the nucleus and bilipid membrane BLM. Okay. Now the question which always haunted is how these self-assembly happen. So, was those the first cells which are formed? But then there are things somewhere or other from this inorganic milieu, some organic compound has to form. Those organic compounds have to self-assemble. So, if I put it in terms of chemical evolution, so that is the term I wanted to introduce first, chemo evolution. So, in other words, 
in an inorganic world. So, the journey as per as my limited understanding of it is that from an inorganic world, of course, here is the time frame which is moving on your on my right hand side, we moved on to an organic world. From the organic world, we move on to a bioorganic come bio inorganic world and possibly in that process we develop the first cell, first current day cell. Why I said current day cell possibly there were other form of cellular structure which has formed, but for a cell to form a biological cell what we just now I drew in the previous slide, this has to form to realize it is being believed that life evolved from ocean or water. Now, this ocean floor was extremely rich, it's believed in it is a saline, salty. So, now in order to form any form of cellular or any separate compartments, something which is not part of it, you have to have a, some form of, if, if this is your milieu of the high saline rich And you have to have some way or other formation of a compartment like this. And a compartment which some way or other manages to regulate the salinity inside. So, the how the first cell has formed, what form of uh, self assembly of molecules have taken place, we have no clue. But somewhere, some 4 to 6 billion years ago, what we call today's biological cell, the foundation stone was laid by, it is believed by the chemoevolutionist self assembly. of inorganic compounds. Why is it so? I am coming to that. So, I told you that from the inorganic world, certain inorganic molecules self assemble these self assemble structures from the first membrane on which it is believed much of this organic world developed and they further self assemble to something bioorganic come um, bioinorganic world which eventually tell us or presented us what we talked about the cell and of course in that whole process we shifted from no oxygen to oxygenated environment in other word anaerobic to aerobic world. This had remained our journey. Now, when you talk about this transition and shift and all these things, one common thematic which 
has evolved over the years or over billions of it is these kind of self-assembly membrane formation compounds have remained. They have been governed by charge transfer or mostly electron transfer because most of the reactions are redox reaction which requires an electron transfer. So, to govern or to drive the evolutionary machinery, so the evolution ready machine, you need a perennial source of electron donor. This whole process of assembling, self-assembling catalysis were governed by a world of redox chemistry. Somewhere or other, this all started. Now, what we will do is, we will talk about some of those first self-assembly of inorganic compounds, which form what we call as present day modern biological cells. Interestingly, why we even talk that they must have formed from inorganic compounds. So, in the next class, we will again revisit the modern day cell and we will pull the story back to 4 billion years ago. Why we think in that way? What are those clues? What are those small points or pointers which tells us possibly the evolution has followed a journey of something like from inorganic world through inorganic molecules, self-assembly of inorganic molecules to the first membrane which act as a catalysis for forming lot of organic compounds, bi-inorganic and bi-organic compounds which led to the evolution of the present day cell. So, I will close in here and the next class will again start our journey from this structure or the modern day structure out here and we will again take a dip back in time with our rational time machine that why possibly life has evolved from here. Okay. Thanks a lot for your attention.